Hi everyone, I'm Chris. Today's video, I want to take a look at uh, quite an interesting bit of kit. It's not been on the market for all that long. Um, this is the Fight Light padded Molly War Belt from Tactical Taylor. I'm going to break the video down into sort of two main parts. I'm going to have a quick review and look over the belt itself, uh, sort of quality of the construction, and then I'm going to go into uh, sort of actually rigging it up and put it to putting it all together after that. So we'll start off, I've, I've partially deconstructed mine. I did have it all set up, but I've taken one of the sections off. Interesting thing about this belt, and I think one of the best features of it, is as you can see, this is one part. When when it comes to you from Tac Taylor, it will arrive, you'll have two side pad sections like these. This one is the, uh, the right hand side. And you've got the center portion. The great thing about that is that it allows you to adjust the length of this belt. There isn't a massive amount of uh, adjustment in it, and I'll explain exactly how you do that a little bit later on. But it is good in that it isn't fixed all the way around as most of these uh, Molly belts are, and there's a lot on the market. And as I say, generally you can't adjust the length of them. You buy them, and they are a certain length, and then that's it. You're stuck with it. With the Tac Taylor, because of the design of it, you can you got that little bit of leeway so that you know you can buy the one that is going to be closest to what you want and then you can set it up and you've got a bit of tolerance adjustment either way so you can get it rigged exactly to the size that you want it to be so we'll go into a bit of the the materials and how they've put it together tactical tailor they've been around a long time and everyone knows they make really top quality nylon gear but let's have a little bit of a close in look now i've gone for the multi-cam one as you can see, as I mentioned, this is the right hand side, so you sit about here when you're wearing it. On the inside, for starters, got 3D airflow sort of mesh. You know, a lot of products use this stuff nowadays. There's a few kinds of this mesh out there, the spacer mesh, and uh, I'm very happy with this stuff. Tactile have chosen up. If you look at the actual side profile of the belt, there it's quite wide, um, so it does mean it is very comfortable. That thickness in that space mesh there will mean you get good airflow, you're not going to get as hot and sweat as much, very, very comfortable to wear for extended periods. Um, it's all stitched down nicely. Velcro, good quality stuff, colour matched obviously, I mean they've not gone with a multicam but this is all going to be hidden away when it's rigged up anyway so it's not much need but it is, you know, coated, coated brown. The webbing, you know, mill spec, standard webbing as you'd expect, they've gone for this Coyote on top of the multicam. Would I have preferred MC webbing? I don't know. I mean, I think this does a perfectly good job. And uh, sometimes the actual the multicam webbing material from Cry can look a bit too bright, a bit too sort of in your face. So this this more subdued with the Coyote brown on there, and it probably reduces the cost slightly as well. Um, now the the main material, the reason this is fight light, um, is uh, Basically, if you look at the Cordura here, I mean, you won't tell this from just from the, the video, but this is all 500 denier instead of 1000D. Um, and that does reduce the weight, reduce even the weight of it. A fair bit, it shaves off a few grams. Um, stitching, if you look, for example, uh, on the inside here, where the Velcro is all sits on, as you can see, it's very consistent. Neat, accurate, they've re, sort of, you know, double, triple stitched all the areas that need it. On the inside of the 500 denier, they've actually reinforced that with, uh, with this material here. It, it does look slightly like, or similar to the light lock multicam material when you look at it closely, but it's, I've actually, I've got my Grey Ghost Gear um, light lock pack here, and it's it's not quite the same stuff. It's You see there's a sort of ripstop pattern to it. It's basically a very, very thin, very, very light ripstop pattern uh, nylon material. So yeah, you've got, you got your 500 denier Cordura reinforced with the lightweight stuff on the inside. More 500, more 500 denier here on the inside. Uh, all your loops are all webbing. You've got ITW Nexus plastic hardware on there. On the actual back portion, they'll sit on the, the very center of the back where your spine is. More spacer mesh. 
100 d core Dura again, same webbing, same stitching, same plastic hardware. Um, the, the back portion here is actually stiffened with it and you can uh, just about see the plastic on the inside there that they've used to stiffen that part, which is good. It helps it you know, sit a bit more neatly. And that's about that for the actual materials they've used. On the, on the end here, you've got a, an elastic retainer. You can either go through the Cordura piece here with your, your duty belt, because you, you will need a, um, some sort of duty belt or a rigger's belt to uh, hold this whole thing together. It doesn't come included with one. And, but yeah, um, got good, strong elastic they've chosen. I mean, basically, the, you know, these guys have been doing this for many years. They know what they're doing. They know how to build really, really high quality, reliable, uh, you know, resilient tactical gear. So, you know, and this, the, the new fight light stuff, this is a, is really no exception at all. I'm, I'm extremely happy with it. It's comfortable to wear. It's, um, it, it perhaps does look a bit complicated when you look at it, but it's really not that bad at all. It is lightweight. It's comfortable. It's cool in the summer. Uh, really well put together, consistent, quality assurance, you know, it, it's all there. Really nothing to complain about. Now, on the side of actually putting this thing together, the, the only reason I'm going into this in the video is that the tactile, they do put instructions, they've got a printed out instruction sheet that they supply anytime you buy one of these belts. It comes in the package with the, the three actual parts of the belt itself. And they're well written, but the pictures I found the actual pictures are perfectly good, but they've printed the whole sheet in black and white. And on my particular one, this could have literally just been on my one, but on my particular set of instructions, there was a bit too much black ink and you couldn't really make out what was going on in the demonstration pictures. And you know, you can figure it out just by yourself or by using the written instructions perfectly fine, but I thought I'd go through it on here anyway. Now, as I mentioned, you do need a, a duty belt to rig this thing all together. Now I've already got the left hand side attached to the back portion and because I've got my I've got my TT fight light roll up dump pouch on here which is kind of it's transitioning between the side and the center and uh, the, the malice clips are a tiny bit tricky so I don't want to take it all apart just now plus I'll have to take off my uh, blue force gear 10 speed helium whisper pistol double pouch mm -hmm. stuff's getting really long I tell you what this lightweight gear between the fight light and the helium whisper stuff from um, Blue Force Gear and TT. It's getting really long names on all these pouches, but anyway, got double pistol dump pouch here, and so they're all rigged up. Um, so that's you know that's what uh, one of the sides all set up is going to look like. But I've taken off the other side here, just left the belt just loop through, just so I can show it to you guys. Now, for threading the belt through the, the centre back section, there's actually there's nothing much to that. All you do is thread it through. On the inside, I'm not sure if you can see it. There are a couple of uh, there are a couple of loops of webbing just below the 500D cordura, just to hold the belt vertically centred inside the back portion. As you can see, it doesn't. There's a slight wobble, but it doesn't. Um, it's not all going to slide right down to here or right up to the top. So attaching one of your side pieces, what you do, open it out like so, and then what you've got is, you've got a sort of handle piece, and then you've got these three strips of webbing. And basically, that's, they, basically, they set the size of the belt, small, medium, large. All you do is you take your handle, and then you place it over the size that you want. I'm going to go with the small one here because that, you know, that fits me. So I'll place that onto there. Take my, I've gone for the ATS wall belt insert because I'm a big fan of these things. In fact, what I like to do actually, I should have done this a minute ago, I like to take the actual QD buckle, fast X buckle off the belt. Um, and I've just got, makes it a little bit easier. And there's, there's another reason that you'll see in a second. So, it's a little bit awkward to show you the camera, I must admit. I've got my, got a handle shaped piece placed over the size of the loop that I want. 
take your jute belt, you thread it through the loop but above the handle section of webbing. Just uh, strain it all out. Pull it through like that. Set that nice and flat, and there you go. That's it. Um, that's it secured in place. It's not going anywhere. There's another loop of webbing here, so I'm going to thread that one through there. And the reason I like to take that fast edge buckle off is I like to go just for that tiny little bit of extra value added, added security, whatever you want to call it. We go underneath the Cordura loop. Like so, so I've not gone under the elastic. Then, take my fast X buckle, the, uh, the male portion of it. Making sure to get it the right way around, of course. Thread that through there. That's on, and then we go above the Cordura, but through the elastic this time. Just really helps to centre the the end section of the of the, uh, the duty belt or your war belt insert or whatever you're going to use. Hopefully that's fairly clear to see. I apologise, it's not the easiest thing to uh, to demonstrate. Velcro down the, uh, the belt insert there. Now, as you see, it does come with these. It's got four harness points, two on the back and then one on each of the left and right side pieces. Now firstly I did pick up the Flight Light four point harness but I found because I'm only running I've just got double pistol, a dump pouch, I've, I've put a, a holster onto the felt. I just found they really weren't necessary, it was just something else cluttering up um, underneath your plate carrier. So I, I didn't go with it in the end, it actually quite sits quite nicely um, and stays in place without any sort of harness or a yoke or suspenders or whatever. But anyway, that, as you can see, that's the uh, that's the duty belt all threaded up, all ready to go. And then all you've got to do is close that, uh, close the actual sort of envelope of your, your camo material around the insert belt. Now, and um, what I'm going to do, because I've got that my, uh, is my HSGI Universal Drop Holster Platform. Put it, what I've done with mine is I've put a, an RTI wheel on the inside, but that's maybe something for another video. Another good feature of the Fight Light Battle Belt is you can see you've got these openings here. There's a few belts that give you this, the, the HSGI Shield Grip Padded Belt. They have these cuts and um, the ATS War Belt. You can... Uh, that's actually split open all the way along the underneath so you can hang drop leg platforms, drop leg holsters from the belt itself rather than having to use the molly webbing and hang it off of that somehow, which generally is not ideal. It's usually better to hang that sort of a, a piece of gear, that sort of bit of equipment directly from your belt. So what I'm going to do is open up belt hanger thread that through the slit back down over the belt insert I know this doesn't look very graceful again I apologize that it's not uh, it's not the easiest thing to do when held up in the air. it's a lot easier to just do it down on a bench or on a table there's the, uh, there's the belt hanger threaded through the actual ATS belt insert and then from the inside it's a little bit it's a little bit of a mess at the moment usually if you take more time over it you can get it to look neater and more con more sort of uh, concise and consolidated than I have it right now but as you see there's the hanger over the belt close up the molly covering and there you go and there you go, there's my, uh, there's my drop leg pistol hung straight off the belt that's going inside the, the padded molly belt. Nice and secure there, you've not got all that weight hanging off 
just the you know the tiny the very tips of the, the stitching that's holding the molly in you've got you've got that weight it's got all supported by the actual belt insert and there we have it tactical tailor quite light padded molly belt very high quality bit of kit very happy with it it's got it's got the adjustment it's got the uh, the quality of the construction comes in um, I believe you can get ATAX and Multicam at the moment, that's the original Arid pattern ATAX when it comes to Tac Taylor's Fight Light line of gear. Hopefully they'll come up with more colours, and they may have already, I've not checked their website the last sort of couple of weeks. But overall, really good piece of equipment. Anyone, if you're in the UK, uh, if you check out tactical-kit.co.uk, I'll put the URL in the description, you can pick these up. It's one of the few bits of American made gear that you can quite easily get over here because we have this website that does distribute tactical tailor products. Obviously, if you're in the US, plenty of different stores will do it. My one came from Op Tactical, very, you know, um, very good store. I use them a lot. So, yeah, I, any questions, guys, please do ask them in the comments. Um, I hope that was a you know, it was, a, it was a bit of a faff trying to hold it up to read everything through, but hopefully it showed you clearly enough. So uh, cheers for watching and I'll see you next time.